Okay. Hi there, everyone. How is everybody? Let's just close that. Okay, can everybody hear me? Bear with me a second, I'm just putting some hand cream on. My hands are so dry at the moment. Let's hope everyone can hear me. Oh, good. Oh, brilliant. Thank you, Janet. Uh, let's just find my feed on Facebook. It looks like the picture's okay for everyone. Uh, where are we? Let's do that and let's do that. Oh, thanks, Catherine. You can hear me as well. Um, perfect. Looks my picture's fine. Okay. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Mum. How's you? Hi, Andrea. Hi, Marion. And Valerie. Oh, hello, Helen. How are you all? Has anybody had snow this morning? Have you had snow, Mum? Have you had snow, Helen? I haven't had a chance chance to look at the chat yet. <laughs> we didn't. We had a super heavy frost this morning. Um, but actually, just looking out in the garden now, that's all gone. And, oh, excuse me. There's a hare just dashing across the field at the back. It's not very often I see those. <laughs> um I would turn you around, but he's gone off into another field now. Okay, no, here's no snow today, no snow there. Oh, good. So, hi, Grandma Bonnie. Bonnie. You've had snow in snow. I can't talk today. Snow in Stoke on Trent. It's easy to read than say. <laughs> um, oh, I hope everything's okay, Andrea. Are you all able to get out and about and everything still? And Catherine's had snow in Cheshire as well. So I think it's definitely more in the north of the country, isn't it? Um, oh, Janet, are you on the naughty step, are you, Janet? Well, I wouldn't expect to see you anywhere else. <laughs> Did you watch Lisa's shows today? Did you get the sentiments? Um, I think a lot of you may have done because I think the big bundle had sold out, hadn't it? So, but to be fair, it was a fabulous set i can't wait for mine to come through it's going they're going to be so useful um and i really like mixing and matching my fonts with the sentiments as well so that's just going to be perfect for that okay minus four in sussex but no snow yeah it's similar to us here actually in jane um it was minus four on well that's what the car said this morning when i drove Stephen into school super cold but pretty and dry so I can't complain. Hi, Sharon from Canada. Oh, lovely to have you here. Okay, so welcome, everybody. Right, let's get going then, shall we? Right, this is the card that I'm um, going to make for you today. There's a couple of different techniques on here. Um, it's not a groundbreaking um, shaped card or anything like that. But this set here, which is the Corner Rose Cluster, um, I hadn't actually used before. I pulled it out from um, the stash there and realised that it was still sealed. So um, it's always good to go through your stash and, and use the things that you haven't used before. But what I was looking for actually when I was looking for this initially was something to go with the budding rose stem that I've used in the background. That was what I decided I was going to use initially um, to create a nice background for you. So... Following on something that I'd done, was it last week with the Blooming Coneflower where I actually stamped onto design paper, I thought today I would take that one step further and create a bit of a design myself in the background and then stamp, um, then stencil over that. So I'll show you that um, because it's the uh, budding, I think it was the budding stem, but it's like a, a, a budding rosebud, basically. I wanted... Um, a rose themed motive on the front and Hazel is doing, I don't know what she's up to. She sounded squeaky, so she's probably lost a toy. Um, yeah, so I wanted something rose themed on the front here, just so as it all coordinates a little bit together. 
Um, now, I will make apologies initially because with this set, as you know, with Lisa's collections, you have the embossing folder and the die, and then you have the stencils to create the collection. They're always available separately, but it seems actually at the moment that the embossing folder and the die are not in stock, but the layering stencils are. Now, I would imagine that it would be something that Lisa is likely to address. And if you, if you don't have this in your stash, actually, and you um, decide you may want it, it might be worth just popping onto um, Lisa's website and just asking to be notified when these come back in stock or when the embossing folder and die comes back in stock. Because what that does, it just gives Lisa a heads up on how many people are actually interested and if she gets enough numbers, then obviously she'll um, it'll make it worth her while to order back in. So it's always worth doing that and just expressing your interest. If something's out of stock on the website, it's always worth to say just hitting that notification. All you do is just put um, your email address in and ask it. It notifies you when that item is back in stock. To say that then is a direct link into Lisa to let her know that it's something. Um, that you want to see back on the website so that's always worth doing but the stencils are in stock and um, as with all of Lisa's designs actually you can stencil these designs and they look just as beautiful and just as pretty without embossing them as they do embossed so I thought I'd go ahead with this anyway <coughs> oh excuse me right and what I'm hoping to do actually is to say I've shown you a um, some techniques with this but then I'll create this card as is um, slightly different colorways in the background but I'll use the same inks and then I'll flip it all on its reverse and do something slightly different so hopefully I'm um, we're going to come out with two cards at the end of this live so what I'll do um, just while I'm getting myself set up let me see I'm just going back to the computer. Okay, now that isn't going to work. I'm just going to put that on there. These are the inks that I've used. And I think what I might do, just bear with me two ticks. I just need to look at my uh, computer just briefly. I don't know what Hazel's shouting at. I have a feeling actually I've um I've shut her out of the conservatory because if she sits in the conservatory, I can guarantee that she'll end up barking at something going on the road. So I think that's what she might be protesting at. Oh Hazel, what do you like? And if you can just bear with me two ticks, what I'm trying to get up for you here. Uh, that's not working. Let me go back to this again. Download that. Download. Where is that coming up? Nice. Is that coming up as a zip? I don't know. Right, so I might just have to abandon this and sort this out in a second. Um, download. Let me come back onto here. There we are, that's worked. Perfect. Right, so you have the ink colours that I'm using there, and I'm using that across both card blank uh, both card designs today and then these are the sets that I've used I should put this back up again at the end of the end of the video for you to take those down but as always I, I always put them in the comments as well but I'll just run through briefly the sets that I'm using for you so to create the background I'm using um, some ink pads and I should also be using the textures background uh, stamps here um, then the 
main set that I'm using is the are the layering stencils, the rose corner rose cluster. Would help if I could talk today. And then obviously we have the embossing folder and the die to go with it. And I've um, I've just used that already just to die cut the image out. Then to create the background again, we will be using the budding stem. So this is a layering stencil and dies. There's no embossing folder with this one. So this makes this really nice to use as a background. Um, there is a die so that it cuts out this really intricate uh, design which is really pretty and I've done a couple of lives using this before using completely different uh, making a completely different card so they might be worth looking up also if you're new to this design or if you have this and just need a little bit more inspiration um, I'm I'm using the sentiment stamps the fabulous fonts now obviously you've all got the brilliant brand new ones coming so any of those will be perfect for you to use um, I've also used, um, just to create the cards together, these two sets of nesting dies. So I've used the nested scalloped and plain circles, and I'll show you where I've used that in a second or in a bit later on. And I've used it, used the nested scalloped and stitched rectangles. So you'll see where I've used those um, as we go through the demo here. So, uh, hi Pamela Edwin. Edwards, um, do anyone know when the tacky mat will be available? The tacky mat is being released. Oh, it's either in Lisa's next show with where she is at Sandown, or it's on her birthday show, which will be February. And she went through this the other day, and this is where my memory recalls. But it's not far away, Pamela. It's um, it's imminent. Um, I don't have one yet either to show you at the moment, so I'm waiting for mine to come through. Okay, so let's get going. We've chatted enough. We don't want to waste any more time. So to create this background, I'll show you how we create this background here. And if let me just push pull this up to the camera. You will notice it's very it's very um, subtle in the background here, but I've used some ink to just colour around the outside, and I've stent. The, I've stamped in the background with the script stamp and then I should be stenciling over the top of that. So that's what I'll be doing for you just now. Um, I am using a palish colour um, purely because that's sort of my preference really. But if you want to use um, different colours, if you give this a go, then obviously um, you'll see that all available. Uh, so you see it a lot easier when you're creating yourself. So I'm just going to take away that... Uh, overlay there we are so we've got the whole uh, screen to see what we're doing now I did put the ink colors up so I've got them here I've got the woodland moss I've got straw hats which actually is funnily enough Dawn used in her live on Tuesday so I think she was saying then as well it is a very pale color but it is so useful and then we have the almond frosting now actually what I think I might do just to make this a bit more visible I'm going to use the ink pad and I'm going to because I want the, this color um, this background sheet to be colored in the background but I don't want it too too colored because obviously we need to stencil over the top of it and this is a very pale color so I found the easiest way to do this and this is um, I would say best done with a pale color you actually take your ink pad and you drag this right across your page. And what that will do is create um, like a real weathered look. And it also adds a really nice border because the concentration of ink will be along the side as just as you um, pull that ink pad onto your cardstock. So if I just show you that, you can see that there's a real concentration of ink here, which the only other way that you can do that is with your blending brush. But also you have that real weathered look going across the page as the ink drags. Now you can press quite hard with this when you're using a pale colour. Um, you can obviously do this with any of the brighter colours, but you have um, 
I would say you have less control because the colour is darker and therefore it makes more of an impact. But you can just see here that I'm just pulling that across and because it is such a pale colour, you get such a weathered look there. And if that's all that you wanted to do with the ink pad and the pulling it across the page, then that will be just an ideal piece of design paper in itself. But to enhance that, I will stamp across the back. Now, I think what I might do as well this time around, I might just do that with the almond frosting too, but I shall be a lot gentler with this because it is a darker colour. And I'll just, you'll see in a second, just as I pull this around, and I, I find it easier to go from left to right, obviously, because I'm right-handed. So that's why I've just turned the the page round so I can get the same effect on both sides like so and I'm just going to do the same just along the edge here so I can just get a nice even border all the way around and let me just show you that again that is just highlighted a little bit with that darker colour around the outside and it's taken that whiteness off the the centre part of the cardstock there can you see that okay so now what I want to do is just add just a little bit more detailing in the background. It's not, I'm going to stamp with the texture stamps and I'm going to use a script, which is my default. I know I, I try not to use it and go for something else, but I always go back to it. Now I'm not going to put this onto a, a block, an acrylic block, because I don't want to have the script perfectly printed so this is just like a distressed background so I'm going to use my fingers and there's just enough stick on here um, I probably shouldn't have put the hand cream on initially but there's just enough stick so I can just ink that up in my ink pad so I'm using the straw hat this time and I'm just going to stamp that down and just by using that on your fingers you will get a really uneven area stamped onto the cardstock and it will change every time so that's how you end up with like a real random script look in the background and you avoid getting the edges and the square edges of the of the stamp which makes it look too contrived I suppose as it were you want this to be a real um random sort of look now i've done that with the uh, straw hat so that's really faint but it's there so just to prove a point and i will just go around the edges with the almond frosting just so you can see how that works and i'm not going to go all the way around because it'll be too much for me at this stage i'm just going to go in the corners and just perhaps do some secondary stamping around the edges and I shall just show you that in a second. So that is how we can start creating our own backgrounds and our own backing paper. So can you see there, the uh, straw hat stamping will be very hard to see. Uh, you may be able to see a little bit of it just here, but you can see the almond frosting stamping, which is just really nice. And as that dries, that will just sort of bed down and blend a lot more into the background. Now, for this background, I want to use the budding stem. So I shan't be die cutting it on this um, this design. And this set only contains one die and three stencils. So it's a really easy collection to use. Now I want to stencil this randomly on this page. So I won't be using my um, peg system for this one. Um, I want to stencil this randomly so what I shall do initially I shall just arrange where I want my first set of stencils to go and it may appear that it goes off the page and that's absolutely fine I want it to be that random. Um, now this in particular would probably work going onto the peg system but I, I'm not going to use that I've used my magnetic mat this time round, but if you're using the Ultimate One, you obviously have the magnetic um, base built into the tool. 
But what I'm going to do, I need to be able to position my stencil in exactly the same place each time. So I'm lining up the, the edge of the stencil so it really butts into the tool there. And I'm just lining up against one of the grid lines at the top here and just laying that down. So you'll see that the design paper is actually off a skew width there. Let me just arrange my camera just a little bit. I wonder if I can do that. What I might do is just push that on there. There we go. Push that on there so you can see what I'm doing. So you can see my design paper is off at a skew width. That's absolutely fine. Now what I want to do is just remember, I want to make sure that I remember which line I'm lining that up towards. So I've just got myself a piece of washi tape and you can either put it on the mat or off to the side, but anything just to remind yourself which line you're actually lining this up against. And then because I'm using my magnetic mat with the Ultimate 2, I can just use my magnets and just make sure that my, uh, my paper doesn't move, if that's something that you're concerned about there. Obviously, when the tacky mat comes along, that will be the ideal tool to use for this also, because your design paper won't be going anywhere that right now we can start stenciling now this is going to be a background thing so i don't necessarily want the this budding rose stem to be as bold into um, your face you can see here that we've got something quite gentle going on in the background so i'm using woodland moss and just gently putting that through the stencil now I'm holding my stencil in place because obviously we haven't got the peg system to keep it um, steady. So if you wanted to, then you can actually use your tape to to just secure your stencil down. But say this isn't all this background piece isn't about having the most accurate of stencils. It really is just something soft in the background. Now, I've stenciled the obviously the leaves in green. This is a bud. So I just want to do a real gentle layer of um, rhubarb jam. I'm using that. You can use any colour. Hazel's very noisy today, isn't she? So you can see there now that we do have actually um, the stencil there. And you can see with everything, all the other ink that we've put on in the background, you can st still see that what we've stenciled. So um, I bring in my second stencil. So stencil number two. Again, I'm using woodland moss again, so I'm really not making this complicated. I'm sticking with woodland moss for the green. I'm just initially using what's on my brush and seeing what, what colour is there. Picking up a little bit more if I need it. And just gently just going across the stencil and just adding that colour in. And say this is all about just keeping this nice um, and gentle and soft for the background. So we keep that like so. Again, that's really soft and it doesn't matter if your layers don't aren't as dark as each other or if the back um, the layer that should be at the back is lighter than what should be at the front. It really doesn't matter at this this stage. It really is just sort of adding background pattern. Now again, stencil number three, we have a little bit of a bud going on there, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of pink just to break it up and then we have the um, detailing on the leaves so we just put our green through there so you can have a lot of fun with this and you don't because you're doing background color um, background papers it's really nice to change your colors up a little bit now that in itself I think would be really really pretty you could just stamp a sentiment on that put that on the front of a card and you're away um, you can just go with that I think that is just so pretty and so um, romantic like it's it's lovely so we want to stencil another piece here just to take away this um, empty area so again what we can do perhaps use stencil number two so you get a better idea of um, the size of the stencil and we will just want to fill this gap here so I think what I might do is just position the stencil that way. So we can fill up lots of that gap. Now, 
I can't line up the stencil on this side this time because we have the design paper coming out this way, but this side is clear. So all we need to do is just use this side of the Ultimate, butt that up against there so you know it's straight, line it up with one of your grid lines. Okay, don't worry if some of the design comes off the paper again, I think that's what just give, will make this background a lot more appealing. Right, I'm just going to slide that down a little bit so we don't have that over the pegs. Okay, so we line that up to there, put my marker tape down so I know what grid line I am working towards, secure the paper down with my magnets and we go again. So obviously we start with stencil number one, that's a given, that doesn't usually change. We have our bud, again a little bit of that is coming off the paper but that doesn't worry me. So we put a little bit of rhubarb jam on and again come in with our woodland moss. and we can just stencil that through again a great thing about this technique is that you don't have to be really precise um, so stencil number two again come in with our woodland moss pick up that little bit more ink you can add as little or as much as you want you can add more ink through one part of the stencil than the other that will make that look um, a bit more distressed Again, it's all about playing actually, and once you're sort of familiar with moving your design paper underneath, just have a play and see what comes out. And honestly, this technique you really can't go wrong, to be fair. So we've got that working like that, which actually looks really nice. I like that. And this layer number three, we put our little layer of red. Again, it's going to be so, so faint. Um, we just put the detailing into the leaves. So that works really nicely. So we bring our stencils back across. We have the nice vines working together like that and maybe just a little section there. So we just bring in our stencil number one. We can fill in that middle section. Again, I'm moving back onto this side to line my stencil up. Um, I will have that overlapping. I don't think that's going to matter. Move my little marker piece of tape across. And as long as I secure this down with the magnets, this isn't going to move. So this overlap in here really isn't going to be an issue for me, I don't think. So a little bit of... Uh, rhubarb jam in there and some woodland moss in through the leaves and stencil number two again using this side of the tool to line up the stencil and my grid line at the top here I can add my woodland moss now, we only have this part of the stencil actually on the paper, so we don't need to worry about all the rest of this. Again, so we just add that layer like so. Stencil number three. Again, we only have a few leaves here, and even those are overlapping what's already stenciled. So I'm really only going to concentrate on one leaf there, because if you start over um, with this sort of design, if you start over stenciling, too many details over these leaves, I think it'll end up looking a little bit messy. That's my particular view. I mean, it would work perhaps with other stencils or if that's what looks good to your eye, then I'll go for it, you know? This really is all about giving you techniques but not necessarily telling you what's right and what's wrong. That is all sort of down to what looks good to you. Um, but I just put in a little bit of the... Uh, rhubarb jam there. You'll notice throughout this I haven't probably picked up any rhubarb jam ink at all. I've just used what's on the brush. So there we have our background paper. And on our card blank this will sit in the back here. Now I haven't actually addressed this yet but the card blank I'm using is my standard square card blank which is almost six inches square or 15 centimeters square. 
So it comes with a pre-score. Oh, hazel. Um, and then just the front section of the card, I've just scored halfway down a vertical line. So that would be three inches in on this particular card and just scored that and folded that back. So that's how we end up with this uh, front fold card. Um, I'm just simply layering what I've stenciled onto a piece of uh, craft card this time around. On this, my original card, I used a Lisa satin card and then laid it onto a grey card stock. But I'm simply going with a craft card this time. And then I can just attach that to the back or essentially the inside of the card actually so we layer that like so and that's half the card done you see now what we'll do in a second we'll actually stamp our sentiment directly onto this in a minute but we need to stencil our embellishment first so then we can line it all up and know where we're going with that so we don't need those I shall bring in my corner rose cluster stencils with my magnets. I don't need them this time and I don't need that anymore. Okay. Now I've already pre-die cut this, so I'm going to stencil straight onto a pre-die cut. So hopefully that'll save a little bit of time afterwards. But you'll see with this one here that I've actually uh, die cut and embossed. Let's bring that closer. And you'll also notice I've got a few little gilding flakes on there as well. Now I'm not bringing the gilding flakes on this time. Um, <laughs> I'm not brave enough for that today, but I shall tell you at what stage would be a good time to add your gilding flakes if you were, if you're interested in doing that. So the layering stencils for the corner rose cluster we have eight stencils in this it's really nice one to to stencil actually so what I'm going to do initially I'm just going to find the stencil that have has the leaves on there that's just going to make sure that I can line this up properly uh, further down the line obviously if you would stencil straight onto a square piece of cardstock so it wouldn't be as essential to line up at this stage. But if you were doing it this way around, then just find the largest stencil and line up your die cut underneath. Hold your die cut and your stencil together. Now I'm just going to move this because it makes, it's going to make it easier for me. So make sure they're lined up. I'm holding those together tightly and I'm just lining that up onto the peg system there. Now, again, your tacky mat would be perfect for this. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's what Lisa had in mind when that tacky mat was um, designed. So I'm going to take off stencil number four and just put that back into the scheme of things so I can work on my stencils from one onwards. So I can bring in stencil number one which are the central flowers here so i'm going to stencil those with straw hat initially just to give a really soft base um, this is a really really delicate color and you really do need to load up your your brush to put through the stencil um, <laughs> yes hazel i know you agree with me um, but don't be put off. I know, I mean, we are saying to you that it's a light colour, whatever. But that is just to just give you um, an indication if you're not familiar with using these inks. And I think it's always nice just to get to grips with inks like this because I'm, we're as a design team familiar with using these colours. So we know what we're sort of reaching for. But yes, it is pale, but don't be put off by that at all. It really does have its place in its collection. So what I'm doing mainly is just going around the outside of these apertures. I find that that's a really nice way just to add the detail. Um, 
and then just using what is might be left on the brush and just blending that through the rest of this stencil and you will find that by doing it that way round the glare of the white cardstock underneath will eventually work its way through um, so for as pale as it is when you actually see this in real life straw hat does make an impression onto white card okay so we can come in with stencil number two so this is our rhubarb jam so I'm using a smaller stencil brush this time around and I'm just again just working around the center or sorry working around the edges of these apertures just like this so the the edges of the apertures for me are going to be darker than the center and that I just find it's a really nice way just to add a little bit of life to these flowers um, so I always add the majority of the ink to the surrounding stencil material and then just work round and round and round and you'll see that this ink eventually works its way into those apertures. Um, I use these stencils like a blending palette which really diffuses that ink before it gets onto the paper and it's that actually that prevents the ink from clumping and going and you know you can get that really sort of static blob on the on your cardstock i mean we've all done it and we still do <laughs> continue to do that but it, you don't want that sort of static blob that you can't unblend out from the paper and it's it, oh, it can be soul destroying sometimes um especially when you sort of worked further into your project but if you use these stencil material here as a blending palette that is le um less like well it's likely to happen less for you so we have stencil number three so this is the internal detail of those paler flowers and for that i'm going to use almond frosting um, perhaps an unusual color choice for for flowers but i really wanted the pink flowers the pink roses to really stand out so i wanted these particular flowers just to be a lot paler so that's why I'm going with that. So I'll just work that detail again in again. And again, what I do, um, I find I do it majority of the time now. I always work more ink into the outside of the design than I do the inside. Um, that must be my sort of signature way of doing these things. You will find your way of doing it um, as well. But it's a really nice way to add the detail to the flowers. Now we can start coming on with first of the um, the leafy stencils. Now there's a couple of different layers of leaves here. Um, I'm going to do the majority of them actually woodland moss. And this first layer I'm going to just go on really lightly. Um, I picked up a small amount of ink and I'm using the majority of the ink that was on the brush already. So I'm just put a really basic layer of ink on there. Now, as with any of these designs and using the Ultimate, you can always go back in and change the intensity of the colour. Um, so it's always best to start out perhaps paler because you can always add more ink afterwards. So now we have two little areas here which are not leaves. I think there they must be sort of branchy. Um, more sort of sticky type uh, parts of the arrangement so I'm actually going to come in a little bit darker on those with the green just to make them stand out so we can move that away and you can see this it's actually come into life now so we have stencil number five again I'm using woodland moss again but I'm going to come in an awful lot darker all the way round, all the way over on this one and you'll see in a second when I pull this away uh, just the difference that will make against the layer that we've just added so I'm really going in strong with this one and making sure that that woodland moss really sort of packs a punch on these larger areas I'm just going to diffuse it a little bit slightly so I'm going to leave it a bit paler on the outside but along this 
edge that is furthest, uh, which is closest to the inside of the arrangement, I'm just going to make sure that stays dark because you're ending up with shadows from the flowers onto the leaves. And I think if you keep that area dark, it sort of gives the arrangement a bit of life, if that makes sense. So if you're ever wondering and, and you're always stuck on how to sort the shading of leave, these leaves and light sources and things, just think of it that way. Now we've got stencil number six. I'm using two different colours on this stencil because we have areas here. We have, um, they could be buds, they could be other bits of foliage, but I'm going to do them two-tone and I'm going to do the, the leafy areas in green and I'm going to do, then do the buddy areas in pink. So come in with the woodland moss. And this time, instead of going round and round, because if I go round and round, I'm going to catch this area of the berry or bud, um, which I don't want to do. So this time round, I'm picking up the ink and I'm going at the base of the leaves and sort of stroking that green ink into the leaves. You will catch a slight amount of that flower area, but not too much. And even though I'm using a large brush, you can obviously, if you wanted to, come in with a smaller stencil brush and just, you've got the control to do the leaves also. But <laughs> I found I was being a little bit lazy, to be fair. Um, and I do sort of keep the one brush in hand. Um, so that which could be that you don't have the smaller stencil brushes and you only have these. So um, just showing you different ways that you are able to can create different effects by using the one, the one tool, if that's of any help to you at all. Um, so these small areas, the tiniest little areas, and I'm still able to colour them with a, with a degree of control using probably the largest stencil brush that we have or large blending brush that we have. So I've done those leafy areas. Now, just before I move off, I just want to make these slightly different. So I'm using my smaller stencil brush and just bringing in a little bit of the painted eggshell. And what that will do is just make those leafy areas a bit greyer. And when I take the stencil away, you will see that they will just look slightly different colour. Um, you don't need to go mad. You don't need to put a huge amount on. But just by adding that on there, it will make um, a real difference. And just before I move the stencil, obviously we want to add our pink. So bring out our rhubarb jam and add the colour onto there. Um, you can go as heavy or as dark as you want on this. It's a really lovely stencil actually. It's something that can be, I think, really adapted for all times of year. You can make it real vibrant with um, your favourite flower colours. You can definitely make it wintry fied, I think. But you can also go pale and pastel or bold and with colours. It's, it's a really lovely stencil to use. So our last stencil no it's not our last stencil stencil number seven we have our detailing on the leaves and while i still think about it i'm going to use the painted eggshell just to bring that detail onto the leaves you can use uh, woodland moss if you use woodland moss with one of these brushes it takes on a completely different um, intensity because these brushes actually add more ink onto the page um, in a lot more in, an intense way. So the larger brushes diffuse the the ink onto the page really well, which is why they're great to cover large areas. But if you really want a concentration of colour in a small area, these white stencil brushes are the way to go. So that's how you can almost change the colour intensity but use, from one ink pad just using brushes. It's actually really clever. So let's make sure I have that one there. And you'll see in a second when I take this away, although it's subtle, just that little bit of painted eggshell onto the leaves just 
just lifts the, the image. So the last stencil now is to bring the detail onto the roses and I shall do that with the rhubarb jam. Now I'm going to do quite an intense colour at the base of each of the flowers just to add some shade in and then just bring that colour into the rest of the layers. And I should do that all the way around. So the way that the arrangement has been done is that the base of all the flowers is closest to the centre. Um, or is the widest part of the flower actually. So these two are close to the centre. This one is on the opposite direction. Uh, on the opposite side. Um, we have little berry areas here. So I'm going to do them really gently in pink. And the centre of those flowers like so. And I think what I might do, which I didn't do before, I'm just going to come in with painted eggshell and just add that little bit of darkness just at the base of those flowers again. Um, it won't make it turn grey, it just adds a layer of darkness, a layer of shadow I think to the base of those flowers. So that might look quite nice. I can't help myself but play and blend. Okay, so yeah, you can see the way that those base of those flowers really do pop. So that's how the corner rose cluster comes together. That is how it would appear on your page. So what I want to do now, when I come into the card, this turned over area here, I'm going to line with craft card, the same way as I did the background behind. Here you can see that I've used the satin card. Now if you wanted to add gilding flakes to any part of this design it would be a good idea to sort of go back in at this stage and choose which layer you would want to add your gilding flakes to. Then what I would do I would get um, an anti-static pad so something like this, which sort of puts a little bit of powder on, and I would dust the design with the anti-static pad. Then choose the layer, choose which one of the stencils you would want to add the gilding flakes through. I chose to use uh, stencil number seven here. So I just wanted to use the details on the leaves. So what I would do, I would then go back in, layer that up, I'd add my gilding glue through the stencil um, and then add your flakes afterwards. So that's that's probably the best way to add the gilding flakes to there. Then make sure that you wash the stencil off. The glue is uh, water-based, so it wipes off easily if you spray it with water and then a microfiber cloth, or equally you can just put it into some mild soapy water in the kitchen and that will wash off perfectly so we have our design which can sit on the front of the card and this is what gives the shaped card here and then we can just glue that on to the front now what you can do just hold this in place if you need to just draw a line with a pencil on the back of the die cut or mentally just note where that line would be and then you can just add your glue just below that. We don't want glue on the majority of on the, or anything on this side, obviously, because then that will just sort of hinder the way that the card closes. But um, the more practice you get at doing this sort of thing, you can just sort of eyeball it and know where to add the glue. So we can just position that centrally on the front. And because we've used the same colours, the back and the front do coordinate perfectly together. And I actually think I love that against the, the craft cardstock. I think I prefer that to this one, although that does have its place with it being shiny too. So I'm just gonna move my platform out the way. Now we need to think about where we can stamp our sentiment. So I'm just gonna get a block available 
Now, this is where you can choose any sentiment. You can use a die cut sentiment. You can put it along the front. You can use a die cut sentiment, put it on the inside. I'm going to stamp one because I really like it stamped straight onto the design. Um, these are the ones that I have available at the moment. So say I'm looking forward to getting the new ones that are coming through. Um, and I just want to see, I want it to be visible from when the card is closed. So I'm just going to pull out the stamp plate and see what is going to fit best. Now, it could be anything, to be fair. Um, everything would work. Um, I don't know what to do. Thank you. Make a nice thank you card, wouldn't it? Right, I'm going to make a decision. I'm going to go have a wonderful day this time round. So I might as well do something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to stamp this straight onto the background, but obviously this set does come with the dies also. So if you're not confident stamping directly, then stamp it onto a piece of uh, cardstock, die cut it out, and then you can position it anywhere. So I've put my stamp onto an acrylic block. Again, use a stamping platform if that's the best thing for you, particularly if you're using the ultimate one. The whole thing is all built in for you. So I've stamped that up. Um, I'm going to put this at the top here. So I'm just going to go straight on. I trust my ink. I trust, trust Lisa stamps. So we have a really nice impression there. And you can see that that is still visible from when the card is closed. So that's actually come together really nicely. So um, all of this is stenciled. So not a piece of design paper in sight. So it's a really nice way for you to actually get going and co to coordinate two different sets of stenciling. Um, so those are the two cards. And you can see actually the backgrounds done the same way they look totally different now what I will do if I can just keep you for five minutes longer I couldn't make up my mind how I wanted this card to work and I had something else in mind and what I've done I've done exactly the same techniques but I'm using a different shaped card so this is a five by seven card okay and what I've done I've used the nested scalloped rectangles here to die cut myself a layer for the front uh, from craft card. So I'm going to attach that on. Now, when you're attaching something with an aperture, make sure you put um, a layer of glue around the aperture because that way that um, your aperture won't sort of go baggy <laughs> as it were and what I've done before I glue this on I've used the nested scalloped circles and die cut through both layers so I've created an aperture um, and because I cut die cut them both at the same time I know that my layer is, in, is exactly in the same pos right position that I want and the two apertures line up together then for the inside, the same way as I've created this one here, with the ink dragging from the ink pads and the stamping into the background, and then stenciling the corner rose cluster, I've stenciled it onto one of the layers out of the nested scallop. So it's a smaller layer and the design doesn't fit onto it, but I think positioned right that looks so pretty just as it is. I mean, you could even just put that on the front of a card with a simple stamped sentiment and away you go. Um, it fits just really lovely. But this is going to be the inside of the card and layered onto another layer of the stitched rectangles. Um, again, this could go onto the front of the card. It's almost a shame to hide it on the inside, but... If you're giving this to somebody special, they get a lovely surprise when they open the card up and see this, don't you think? So I'm just going to lay this up. And this is going to sit on the inside of the card, like so. So 
So when I close the card, you have just a little peep of that coming through the aperture like so. Right? Isn't that nice? Actually, I really like that against the um, the craft card. It, I reached for the craft card when I was making this size card and sort of wished I'd done it on initially, but we've remedied that. Now, what I've done here, instead of using the budding stem as a background, I have actually stenciled it and die cut it out. So just to show you, we had three stencils with the budding stem and there is a die that goes with this as well. So you don't actually miss the, the embossing folder. So there is a die and I've stenciled this, how many times? Might have been four times actually. Yeah, I've stenciled this four times and then I was brave and I added a little bit of the gilding flakes just to the bud area. You know where I was putting the rhubarb jam colour through this? Oh, there we are. I'm just trying to catch the light. There we are. But instead of add, adding the rhubarb jam, I used um, the pink gilding flakes. So we've got the pink blush and that is just sitting in those buds there. And just that's how I like to use sparkle, just really subtly. So that will just... Um, just highlight those buds there now what I've done here my thought was that I can create some sort of wreath with these rose buds onto the front of the card so there's a couple of ways I can do this by looking at it what I will do to start is stamp a sentiment on the front because that is just going to set the scene, I think, for the rest of the card. So I'm just going to choose my sentiment. Um, I want a relatively small one, so bear with me. It could be. It would make a nice thank you card, but I actually use um, birthday cards a lot more. So I'm going to use... I'm going to use just because... I think because I think that can still be used for a birthday and it's just a nice compact little sentiment so I'm going to put that onto the block again get my black ink ink that up nicely and I'm just going to stamp that into the corner there again just the way that I did on the other card in the background but straight onto the craft card that looks perfect there so I had in mind what I knew what to do with this now there's one of two ways I think I could do this um, you can just put the rosebud there I think and the natural shape of what's going on here really does sort of hug the aperture really nicely and I think that works really well so that's one way of doing it the other way is to actually start cutting into the rose die cut. Now, um, when I pulled out the budding stem die, I had a couple of these from before, which is what I've cut out other times that I've used this. I've actually cut the, the leaves off and they were just perfect just to sit around the aperture of the, um, around the outside of the aperture also which I thought might be a nice way of doing it. So we can either do that and then add our rose stem like so. Or, now this is where I'm going to be really indecisive and I possibly won't get this finished um, for you. Um, I'll, make a, I'll make a decision a bit later on. But what you can do, you can actually cut into these rose stems and I think this is where this rose or this budding stem actually starts working for you really well there is so much you can do so you can actually cut this out and start creating like a wreath around the outside so I might just stick that there I might let's just go for it shall we I won't keep you too much longer so I'm going to do that there this stem really does follow that curve of that circular aperture perfectly and I'm going to carry on using 
this die cut because it's got the same colours as the rose stem that we've used. And I will just figure out how best to do that. And I think what I might do, I might take off these leaves so I can add those just like so. Yeah, I might do that. Just add a little bit of glue. So this is really a case of playing. This is where you can get really, really creative. And then I will take, I think, uh, some other of these rosebuds and just cut these down. And the way to do it is just to follow the shape of the die cut, really. Um, and if you don't get it quite right first time, try again. You know, just there's no sort of right and wrong way of doing this, but you'll get more familiar and more confident in snipping into your die cuts in this way the more that you do it so that way we can actually add some flowers we might add our leaves in around the top here or we can just leave it like that I really don't know so now this is where I'm being indecisive we could add our rows in like that actually so I might just add like that again you could have just added this straight onto there we are but again you could have just added your rose stem like that and that would have worked also lots of different ways i would say that's something you can sort of <laughs> contemplate and and carry on doing in your own time i can waste a load of time doing that and i won't now but that's two different cards for you using exactly the same techniques and just um, the two major floral um, sets for you today as well so hopefully that's giving you um, some renewed ideas um, on using some of these sets that have been in our stash for a little while so it's really nice to revisit them it's really nice to use different colors with them um, it's possible that a lot of the ink colors haven't been released when the these collections have been released, so it's nice to just to go back and choose different colours for them also. Um, card. My favourite would be the one on craft card. Yeah, I like the one on craft card too, Marion. Um, it actually just sets it off really nice, doesn't it? Um, so I shall leave that with you there today. So I've taken up probably a little bit more time than, than usual. But to say I do get <laughs> I do get a little bit carried away doing this, but I appreciate you all sticking and hanging around with me. I um, hope you enjoyed Lisa's shows today. Um, remember that oh, there may be a quick live from Lisa on Friday just before Dawn Wheeler launches the pro the weekender um, for this week, and then have a lovely time at these shows if you are going to stand down at the weekend. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. So enjoy the rest of your week, everyone, and take care. Bye now.